Hi, everybody. When I um, agreed to come here and address you all, I didn't realize that I would be in the very dangerous after lunch slot. So I'm going to do my best to uh, sort of entertain all of you um, and, and keep your attention. I wanted to um, you know, just thank uh, Thomas and the Dragon Capital team for inviting me here today uh, and for organizing uh, what uh, is a very interesting conference. I know that everybody here today shares an interest in supporting the reforms that will continue building a strong Ukraine to host a thriving business and investment community. Making the choices to undertake and then actually stick with tough reforms is difficult. The desire and the energy for reform needs to come from a lot of different places, from some of the people up here uh, on the panel, leaders in government, but also leaders in society and in the business community. And I'd also add in the investment community. All of you have something that Ukraine needs and wants. So you have a tremendously important role to play in this process. The panel is going to consider Ukraine's reform and geo geopolitical choice. I think all of us can agree that the Ukrainian people uh, and the government uh, on the Maidan and then the government that they have elected to represent them have made a clear choice to embrace European values and reorient themselves towards the West. But making the choice and then making it happen are two different things. It's an ongoing process, it is difficult, it takes time, and frankly, in any country in the world, it gets harder over time. Moreover, I think the inherent nature of any reform process is that all of us tend to pocket accomplishments and forget where, where we've come from, and then we focus on the next thing. So let me take you back to 2014. And many of you, of course, were here in 2014. And then, um, but in 2014 and through 2015, the Ukrainian economy, quite bluntly, was one of the worst performers in the world. The Yanukovych re regime had fled with millions, probably billions of dollars of public money, and completely neglected the macroeconomic management and long-term investment that Ukraine needed to grow and to thrive. GDP fell 20% in that period. The currency depreciated by 65%. Inflation was 45%. And foreign exchange reserves fell to just $5 billion. Thanks to the sound economic management uh, of, uh, of the government and a strong partnership with the international community, today Ukraine is a country where GDP is growing with a stable currency and reasonable inflation. Reserves are at their highest level in years. It's remarkable that while simultaneously responding to military aggression in Crimea and in uh, eastern Ukraine, the government handled a dire economic situation more decisively than any previous government. One example of these tough but necessary reforms is in the, ne in, in the energy sector. Charging market tariffs for gas was a tough decision and not a popular one, especially over a cold winter. However, it is making Ukraine more secure, more independent, and more prosperous. Who would have thought three years ago that Ukrainians would not import any gas from, U uh, from Russia? No gas from Russia was imported in 2016. Or that Naftagas, instead of sucking up 7% of GDP in subsidies, that Naftagas would actually pay 60 billion hryvna a year in taxes to the government. That's a real difference. Last year, the Ukrainian government also launched an important transparency uh, reform with uh, the decision to require public servants to declare all of their assets. It's certainly uncomfortable. As somebody who has to do this in my own country, uh, I understand how uncomfortable that makes people. And this is a very, very thorough process. But it's that kind of transparency and accountability that is really important now uh, for the Ukrainian people and sets a positive tone for those looking to invest in Ukraine. And anecdotally, we hear reports that it is already changing behavior. Not everyone's behavior by a long shot, but the behavior of some. 
And that is how change starts. In December, the, uh, the government undertook the nationalization of Privat Bank. Many of you may have followed that. It was a very complex process, and um, I think saying that it was very complex un probably understates uh, the complexity because it was the largest nationalization anywhere, ever. And I think in the banking sector, uh, the MBU closed over 80 troubled banks, ensuring long-term access to finance and credit for all Ukrainian customers and businesses. National um, Bank Governor Hontareva deserves, I think, probably the lion's uh, share of the credit for all the main, many changes in the banking sector. And I hear that you gave her a very well-deserved uh, ovation this morning. Uh, I know that, I, I probably speak for everybody, that I think we're going to miss her in her, um, in her capacity as uh, National Bank Governor. Um, but I think perhaps I also uh, speak for uh, many of you in the room that we believe it is important that her eventual successor be a competent, experienced manager who operates free from political influence. These are really important principles, and I urge all of you to make your views known on that score. Although all these reforms were challenging to enact and continue to be challenging to implement, they were necessary steps that will have a lasting positive effect for Ukraine citizens and are important signals to the market. But much work uh, remains to be done, as I think we all know. And it's vital, as my EU, EU counterpart noted this morning, that Ukraine keep pushing forward on reform. Many of the most important reforms are in the area of anti-corruption. I think many of you are aware of the three independent anti-corruption institutions that the Ukrainian government established. Uh, for prevention of corruption, investigation of corruption, and prosecution of corruption. These are very, uh, there are very high expectations. They are young organizations and they are going to continue to require resources in order to grow them and strengthen them. And um, they are also going to continue to, they are going to need independence from any political interference. In the immediate term, it's important that the government of Ukraine ensure the audit of the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, NABU, is performed in an independent, credible, and transparent manner. Key to this will be appointing a commission that has the requisite technical expertise, the confidence of the public, and independence from political inf interference. We also believe that it's crucial that that uh, uh, Ukraine successfully investigate and prosecute officials based on information contained in asset declarations. Such, such a process should be uh, credible, it should be transparent, and it should be, again, free from political interference and commensurate with the obvious discrepancy uh, between assets and salary where that occurs. Along with many of you, we are closely following the judicial proceedings against State F Fiscal Service Chief Roman Nasirov. It is absolutely imperative that this uh, investigation and um, subsequent trial uh, are conducted to the highest standards. I mean, this is critical, I think, for the credibility of Ukraine, uh, as well as the, uh, the institutions that are working on this issue. Looking ahead to the next few months, we urge the RADA to pass legislation creating a specialized anti-corruption court. Uh, it will also be important to establish uh, independent wiretapping capability for NABU. Uh, the government has also committed to passing uh, comprehensive pension reform to ensure the system's solvency, and on a human scale, to ensure that payments that people receive are actually payments that would make a difference in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, right now, the payments are so small that they, they really don't, and I think that's one of the uh, purposes for, uh, for the reforms. We look forward to uh, the next steps on uh, what is a really important initiative. Ukraine's leadership also recognized the importance of unlocking the enormous potential of one of Ukraine's greatest and most culturally important resources, and that is its land. 
rules need to be developed uh, by which land can be bought and sold so that it can be monetized and put actually to the advantage of uh, people who own the land. This measure would critically transform the lives of Ukraine's millions of small landholders uh, and it would also really jumpstart the agricultural sector. State-owned enterprises are another crucial area where economic reform is necessary. Uh, the successful privatization of at least one large state-owned enterprise as soon as possible will demonstrate, I think, to the business community and to the investment community that Ukraine is serious about privatization. We all know that a successful privatization would unlock many doors and spur the economy. For those state-owned enterprises that are not privatized, uh, it's important that um, corporate governance be in, uh, in, uh, good corporate governance be instituted, particularly in the defense sector and at Naftogas, where um, corporate governance is a bellwether for the rest of the state-owned sec uh, enterprise sector. This week's Cabinet of Ministers resolution instituting standards of corporate governance at Ukraine's largest state-owned enterprises was a positive step and we look forward to their implementation. Finally, I'd like to highlight the US advocacy regarding protection of intellectual property, which is the top concern. When asked, you know, what are the concerns for, for US traders? Um, the top concern of US trading partners, and I know for many others as well, including Ukrainians, is intellectual property rights. We are committed to helping improve Ukraine's ability and desire to protect the intellectual property rights of all creators. Just last week, a Ukrainian government representative participated in hearings in Washington on Ukraine's ratings in the US government's annual Special 301 report, which will be issued in the coming weeks. The Ukrainian government has acknowledged that more work needs to be done uh, in the near term, and so we are uh, certainly looking forward to that. We strongly believe that the best defense for Ukraine against the external aggression that threatens Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and the internal corruption through entrenched interests that saps Ukraine's prosperity, democracy, and independence is continued reform success. This is the best way for Ukraine to show the world that it is committed to taking the steps necessary to be a prosperous and independent state rooted in democratic and Western values. The US supports further reforms that will make Ukraine strong and a strong partner for the United States. As Ukraine's business and investment leaders, I know that you have a vital voice in pushing for tough reforms, and I, I really challenge all of you to continue pressing the government and spreading to the, uh, the word to the public about the reforms that are still needed. We are living in a time of political and economic change, not just in Ukraine, but across the world. And Ukraine has to seize the opportunity to stand out above the rest. The best way to do that is for Ukraine to keep on pushing forward on its chosen pro-reform path. So in closing, I'd like to thank all of you, um, but I'd also like to urge you to continue finding opportunities to support Ukraine by highlighting the successes to date and advocating for those additional reforms that may be painful, but are ultimately necessary. I'd also like to note that I am an optimist about Ukraine's future. There is tremendous potential here, and I believe that all of you must see it or else you wouldn't be in this room today. Uh, but that potential needs to be realized, and I think it's gonna happen because of the Ukrainian people. The single biggest change that I've seen since, uh, since I returned in August of 2016, I lived and worked, he uh, worked here from uh, 2001 to 2004. Uh, I left in July before the, um, before the uh, Orange Revolution, the biggest single change that I've seen are in the people of Ukraine. When I was here before, people, I think, genuinely wanted to uh, have a government that was accountable, transparent, brought uh, results that are good for, uh, for the Ukrainian people. Um, but I think sometimes there was a doubt as to whether or not that was, that was actually truly possible in the short term, in their, <clears throat> in their lifetimes. But when I came back uh, uh, in August of 2016, 
it was clear that people knew that it was possible and they, were work they, they expected it and they were working to make it happen. And so, you know, I've met many individuals who have left uh, lucrative jobs in the private sector. Uh, in fact, some of them are actually on this panel. Uh, and um, perhaps some of them used to work for you uh, to, uh, to work for the government uh, in order to make that change. Others are push pushing for change in, in the private sector. So not only do people think it's possible that, uh, that what the people on the Maidan said they wanted, transparency, accountability, results, not only do they think it's possible, they're working to make it happen. And I find that uh, to be really impressive and frankly, very inspiring. So that's what makes me confident about Ukraine's long-term future, and I hope it makes all of you confident as well. So I thank you for being here today, and I, I wish you a lot of uh, success with the rest of your conference. Thanks.